If you want to look at silicon chips up close, do not buy this kind of microscope. There are many digital microscopes like this, and they will all leave you severely disappointed. In this video, I'm going to do a deep dive on six different digital microscopes that I got from Amazon and compare them to my two optical microscopes. I try to pick a varied set of microscopes that have a wide range of features and specifications. Some have screens, some are high definition, and some advertise up to 2000 times magnification. As I go along, I'll be filling out this table with all the specifications of each microscope. The full table with all the data will be at the end of the video and we'll analyze it further. In my mind, the most critical aspect of a microscope is its magnification. I came up with two tests in order to test the magnification of each microscope. In the first test, I'll use this microscope calibration slide and take a photo at the maximum magnification. In the second test, I'll look at this silicon chip with each microscope again at the maximum magnification. I'll be using my two optical microscopes as the control group to compare against. The first microscope that I got was the SM-4TZ-144A from Amscope. It's a stereo microscope that's on a boom arm that is really great for looking at stuff and soldering. This is the microscope that I initially used when I first started looking at silicon chips. The spacing between lines on the calibration slide is 0.01 millimeters. The current magnification is only 45 times, but we can change it by swapping out the Barlow lens. I also have this protective cover that helps prevent the Barlow lens from being damaged. This is definitely useful if you're doing any sort of dangerous work underneath the microscope. The current Barlow lens on here is a 0.5 adapter, so it's effectively cutting the total magnification in half. This is useful for creating a large working distance for doing things like soldering or other repair work. After removing the 0.5 Barlow lens, I can swap it out for a 2x. The microscope has an internal adjustable magnification of 0.7 to 4.5 times. Using a 10x eyepiece and a 2x Barlow will then net us 90 times for our total magnification. This microscope model comes with an LED ring light fitted with 144 individual LEDs. I found that attaching the ring light higher helps me get closer to what I'm looking at. If I swap out the 10x eyepiece for a 25x eyepiece, this microscope is capable of a maximum magnification of 225 times, which looks like this. There are about 80 divisions across the screen, but there are actually a bit more because of how it's cropped. This gives us a decent representation of what 225 times magnification would look like. For the second test, I'm using the ADSP 2181, which has a doodle of Sonic on it. I'll take a photograph of Sonic with each microscope. Filling in the table here is pretty straightforward. The maximum magnification is highly dependent on what lenses and eyepieces you use. It also doesn't come with a camera, so that's an additional cost that you'll have to consider. In the photos and video so far, I've been using my Samsung cell phone looking through the eyepiece. That will also be true for the next microscope. The second microscope that I bought is the ME580 series from Amscope. The ME580 is a metallurgical microscope, and this particular model has a dual illumination, allowing it to illuminate objects from the top or the bottom. It also has a wide range of fixed magnifications that are dependent on what optics are used. For this video, the maximum magnification this microscope can produce is 500 times, which is accomplished with a 50 times objective and a 10x eyepiece. I'll be using these photographs as references for the other digital microscopes. If I zoom out a bit, you can see that there are just about 36 divisions at this magnification. Since all the other digital microscopes claim to have greater than 1000 times magnification, we should expect to see half as many or less divisions on those microscopes. Next, let's take a look at Sonic again. The ADSP 2181 is one of many DSPs from analog devices many of which also have other Sonic themed doodles on them. It's easy to pick out Sonic at 100 times magnification and even easier at 200 times magnification. At 500 times magnification, you can pick out all the details on Sonic and even see that he's on two different layers. At 1000 times magnification and beyond, I'd expect Sonic to take up the entire screen. 
we'll see what happens. I'll add all of the data to the table, noting as before that there is no camera included with this model. There are many other models that come with different cameras, and I should note that the price does not reflect the normal 15-20% to off sale price that Amscope has on their website. Up next is the cheapest USB microscope that I could find on Amazon back in 2022 for a price of $9.99 US. The box is nice enough to include a list of applications like skin inspection, but also lists other inspections, so technically chip inspection should be included. The box lists the image resolution up to 640x480 and 1920 to 1080 it also claims a frame rate of 30 fps, but there's no indication of the maximum magnification on the box. On the microscope, however, the text 50x to 1600x is printed next to the slider. The slider moves the entire lens assembly up and down through the entire microscope to adjust your focus. Removing the two screws holding the PCB in place allows us to get a closer look at the sensor. The sensor is a small BGA component with no protective housing, basically as cheap as you can get. There are a few support chips nearby that interface with the image sensor and allow you to connect over USB. It looks like the circuit board is also configured for old and new, and this is the old option, whatever that means. Overall, the image sensing area is pretty small, so I wouldn't expect this to be more than 640 by 480 of course, an easy way to confirm that is to put everything back together and plug the microscope into a computer. After plugging this into my USB port, Windows claims that this is a 0.3 megapixel sensor capable of 640 by 480 p resolution. Here's the first photo I took, and here's one fully zoomed in. To me, it looks very similar to the 100 times magnification photo. I also recorded some video. Here's some 480p resolution 24 fps video from this microscope. If we move over to where Sonic is, we can take a photograph and compare it to the others. Here's the photo I took, and again, it looks very similar to the 100 times magnification, so I feel confident in ballparking this around 100 times magnification. Unfortunately, this is nowhere near the 1600 as indicated on the microscope. Coupled with the 0.3 megapixel sensor, the image quality just isn't very good. This microscope may be nice as a toy, but it's not good for looking at silicon chips. With the microscope fully assembled again, I can take it apart so we can get a closer look at the sensor under the microscope. It's pretty hard for me to believe that they can sell this for $9.99 and still make a profit. That just means they gotta cut corner somewhere and the corner that gets cut is the image sensor. Looking at it under the metallurgical microscope, we can see some interesting details. We're actually looking at the silicon chip through the top protective cover. The big rectangle in the center is an array of photo sensors, and fit all around the edge are the support circuits for it. I have to zoom in pretty close just to see any detail on this part, and unfortunately since we're looking through the protective cover, everything's a little bit fuzzy at 500 times magnification. The only thing I found that resembles a part number is this string of cutoff characters in the corner. It could be any one of these, or maybe not. The last thing I can try is to take the sensor off and see if there's a part number on the back of it. While I'm at it, I guess I might as well take off all these other chips and see if we can extract the silicon from inside them as well. Removing the chips is simple enough and can be done with just a little bit of hot air. Using even hotter air, I can attempt to extract the silicon chips. And unfortunately, I was only successful with the two SO8 packages. Both of these chips are incredibly small. Here they are next to the image sensor. First, let's take a look at this chip. Based on the part number, I believe this is a 64 kilobit I squared C EE prom from Puya Semiconductor. If we zoom all the way in, we can confirm this by comparing the logo to the one on the datasheet. Next, I'll take a quick look at this unmarked chip. It's essentially the same size as the last one. I'm not exactly sure what the function of this chip is, but it does look like it has a lot of stuff going on. I did find some text that looks like it might say ONY, but I don't know what manufacturer that would be. Even at 500 times magnification, it's hard to make out the small details on this chip. Lastly, I'll check the back of the image sensor, and there are some numbers on here, but they don't seem like they're useful at deciphering what this part actually is. 
Unfortunately, that means I won't be able to determine what the specifications for this part are supposed to be. That being said, I'm inclined to believe that this is a 0.3 megapixel sensor as Windows previously reported. Since this microscope will no longer work, I might as well finish the job and take it completely apart. These two brass rods are used to bring power up to the LEDs on the top of the microscope. The microscope is filled with grease, which allows the center lens assembly to screw up and down with the help of the other plastic insert. Overall, it's a very simple design for a very cheap microscope. In fact, it's the cheapest microscope at $9.99. We're not off to a great start performance-wise, and I have low hopes for the next microscope. Next up, we have the Oxbird USB microscope, which boasts a maximum magnification of 2,000 times. This microscope comes with an adjustable stand that helps adjust the focus. This is what the image looks like at its highest point. Adjusting the microscope to its lowest position will allow me to take a photograph with the highest magnification that this microscope can handle. Unsurprisingly, according to Windows, this is also a 0.3 megapixel sensor capable of 640 by 480p. The image quality is very similar to the previous microscope. Zooming in again, I can take a photograph at the highest magnification. Just like before, I can overlay the various photographs on top, and I think this looks exactly like 100 times magnification. For example, if it was 200 times magnification, we would expect to see fewer divisions. So far, this microscope has turned out to be pretty similar to the previous one. Next, I'll use this microscope to look at the silicon chip and photograph the sonic doodle. Just like the previous microscope, the image quality of this one leaves a lot to be desired. For example, the sonic doodle is barely recognizable, but it is still about 100 times magnification. I should also note that both of these microscopes have a digital zoom feature, but it's not going to improve what you're looking at. When saving photos, both microscopes do not save at the digital zoom level. Anyways, taking this microscope apart, the internals are almost identical to the first microscope as well. As far as I can tell, it's the exact same circuit board and all the same parts are used. Even the resistors are set to the old configuration. I guess the only thing left is to pop this under the microscope and confirm. Almost immediately, I can tell that this sensor is identical to the previous one. It has all the same features, and based on the fact that it was on the same PCB, I'm confident that these are in fact the same image sensor. It's surprising just how many additional circuits they had to put on here to support the image sensor. After adding the entries for the Oxbird into the table, it's easy to see that these are essentially the same microscope, even though the Oxbird advertised 2,000 times magnification. Will any of these microscopes actually match their advertised magnification spec? Next up is this microscope from Anlov. It comes attached to a screen that makes viewing what you're looking at very easy to do without a PC. That being said, it can still connect to your PC via USB. The box has lots of options, but none of them appear to be checked, besides the model number, DM4. I also like the disclaimer on the box, we reserve the right for a final explanation. I wonder what they have to explain. Unfortunately, the microscope has no built-in memory and it will not save photos unless you have an SD card installed. One of the things that these three microscopes have had in common so far is just how hard it is to get them to focus. Here you can see that even though the microscope is stable, the image moves around as the internal assembly moves back and forth inside of the housing. After much struggle, I'm finally able to get things lined up and we can take a look at the maximum magnification of this microscope. Here's what it looks like on the screen and here's the saved photo. Once again, it looks very similar to me to about 100 times magnification. Here's some video that it captured. The noise you're hearing is noise captured by the microscope. Interestingly enough, the metadata for this file says that it's 720p resolution. And here's what Sonic looks like. The microscope comes with a pre-installed 18650 lithium battery, which makes it truly portable. There are four small screws that attach the microscope tube to the upper housing. 
After removing the screws, the two parts separate with just a little bit of wiggling. However, they're still connected by this ribbon cable. The microscope tube itself easily slides out of the lower housing. The flex cable is held securely in place with some very sticky tape. After removing the tape though, the microscope assembly can be fully separated. This microscope's design is different from the first two. This circuit board only has the image sensor on it. The other parts must be in the upper housing. Zooming in, it's apparent that this is also a completely different image sensor. Searching for this part number led me to discover that this is a part from Galaxy Core. According to the datasheet I found, this should only be capable of 640 by 40 p resolution, which contradicts the metadata from the previous video. This datasheet also has a great block diagram that shows all of the different circuits that are present on this chip that support the main pixel array. It looks like in one corner of the chip there is a test pattern that must be used for the Bayer filters. Just like the first image sensor, all of the support circuits are placed around the edge of the chip. One thing that's different about this photo sensor, other than the fact that it actually has a part number, is that the part number is cut out of one of the upper layers. This allows for a clearer view of the circuits underneath. If I shift over to the pixel array, we can zoom in and get a closer look at the individual pixels, although we are still limited by the distortion. According to the datasheet, each pixel is 3.4 by 3.4 micrometers square. Zooming back out, we can see that the actual focusing mechanism of this microscope is identical to the first two. At the end of the day, it's essentially the same microscope as the first two with a slightly different sensor and a monitor attached. Although, there is still the discrepancy of the sensor's resolution. Even though the sensor should only be 0.3 megapixels maximum, Windows reports it as 0.9. There's definitely something screwy going on here, especially since the Amazon listing lists it as 8 megapixels. In reality though, it's essentially the same as the first two with a few more features. Moving on to the fourth microscope is another digital USB microscope. This one's from Kanda. It's very similar in appearance to the first two microscopes, but instead of coming in a box, it came in a nice carrying case. I'll pop it open just like the rest and take a look at the sensor inside. With a little bit of force and some wiggling, the two halves will separate, revealing the circuit board inside. The first difference that I noticed about it is that it's blue. Also, instead of soldering the wires directly to the circuit board, they're terminated nicely with some headers. Having just looked at the previous microscope, I can tell that this one uses the exact same sensor. If I zoom into it, you can see that it has the exact same part number on it, GC0308. The most interesting thing about this microscope though is that when I plug it into Windows, it only reports 0.3 megapixels. The photo and video metadata also doesn't lie and reports 640 by 480 p resolution. Just like the previous three microscopes, this one's maximum magnification is right around 100 times. I think the Galaxy Core 0.3 megapixel sensor is slightly better quality than the 0.3 megapixel sensor used in the first two cameras. That being said, in my opinion, these four microscopes are all currently tied for last place. Let's see what the last two microscopes look like. This next digital microscope claims to be capable of up to 4K Ultra HD resolution. This microscope also claims a maximum magnification of 1000 times. I'm really hoping that it lives up to its claims and isn't the same as the other four. This microscope can either plug into a computer via USB or connect directly to your phone over Wi-Fi. It has a built-in 1100 mAh rechargeable battery that should last about 4 hours. I'll start by connecting the microscope to my cell phone over Wi-Fi. The process to do so is pretty straightforward, but I did run into some issues later on. I was surprised that the image on the phone screen updates in almost real time. Next, let's see what the microscope calibration slide looks like. While these photos do appear to be 4K, the maximum magnification doesn't appear to be as high. It only seems like it's about 50 times magnification. The microscope does have built-in buttons to increase the zoom digitally, 
but unfortunately you can't take photos or videos at the zoom level. Next, let's take a look at what the chip looks like under the microscope. Overall, it is still sort of finicky to get things lined up, but the image quality does appear to be better than the first four microscopes. I was also able to record some video with a microscope, both at 1080p and also 4K resolution. I'll insert those videos in just a minute. Before that though, here's a quick example of what it looks like as I'm trying to record the video. Hopefully this gives a sense of how difficult it can be to get things lined up under these types of microscopes. One issue that I did run into while using this Wi-Fi camera is that after 52 seconds of recording video, the app shut down. Unfortunately, this video didn't save, so to prevent it from happening again, I did all the next clips on my PC. Here's some 1080p video shot at 18 frames per second. There's definitely a lot more detail to see, but unfortunately it doesn't get as close as the other cameras did. Next, here's some 4K video shot at 9 frames per second. If this microscope had a higher magnification, it actually won't be that bad. Although, it isn't really good at capturing 4K resolution video at only 9 frames per second. The 8 megapixel photos it can take aren't that bad though. Next, I'll take everything apart to get a closer look at the sensor inside. It was definitely pretty difficult to get in here, but I was eventually able to separate these two pieces apart. One half contains the lithium battery, and the other one contains the majority of the circuitry. Similar to the other designs, there's a flex cable that connects the main logic board to the circuit board that has the image sensor on it. After carefully removing the flex cable, the circuit board can be removed. Is it going to be the same sensor? No, it's different. It's huge. Just based on the appearance alone, the image sensing area is much, much larger than the 0.3 megapixel sensors. It's definitely possible that this is a true 4K image sensor. Unfortunately though, I didn't find any identifying marks on this chip looking at it closer under the microscope. There still was some interesting stuff to look at though. On the back side of the main circuit board is the Wi-Fi module. Windows does also report this as a 8.3 megapixel sensor and 4K resolution. While this microscope does miss the mark in terms of magnification, it makes up for it in overall resolution. Up last is the most expensive microscope that I purchased for this video, the 16 megapixel Tomlov microscope. This microscope comes with a built-in high-definition screen, but also has HDMI outputs for connecting to an external monitor. According to the advertised specifications, this microscope is supposed to be capable of 1200 times magnification and a 16 megapixel sensor. It also comes with a handy IR remote for taking photos and navigating through all the menu settings. This microscope is capable of 16 times digital zoom, but once again, it can't save photos at the zoomed-in resolution. I was able to take some 1080p resolution video though, here's what that looks like. My first criticism of this microscope is that the 6 LEDs around the center can't be disabled. Here's what it looks like trying to zoom in and focus on this microscope. Eventually I was able to get everything focused at the maximum magnification possible, which to me looks identical to 50 times magnification. I should also point out that if the 16 times digital zoom is supposed to factor into this, 50 times 16 is only 800, which would still fall short of the 1200 times magnification that's advertised. Let's wrap this last test up by seeing what Sonic looks like. 
Even though the photo looks great, this is still only about 50 times magnification. Here's a few other photos that I took with this microscope. I actually enjoy this microscope so much that I kept it, and I still use it to this day. While it can't take very close up photos, it's a stable platform for taking other macro style photos. The last thing left to do is to open it up and see how it looks inside. One thing that I noticed while trying to take this apart was this mount. I'm not sure how you would use it, but it's there if you need it, I guess. The label on the back of the microscope says that the model number is DM201. It also includes a rechargeable lithium battery for portable microscoping. After I moved all the screws around the outside of the microscope, the two halves almost separated, but they're held together with a flex cable. After separating the two, we can take a look at the circuit board that's inside. There's actually quite a bit of stuff going on. On the right is a flex cable that goes down to the camera circuit board. In the upper right is an empty spot for a wireless module, and then this looks like a pretty beefy CPU. I tried to remove the circuit board, but it actually seems like it might be glued in place. Not to mention that the battery holder is soldered to it, so I'm gonna have to leave it. Before I give up looking at the sensor though, I'll try approaching it from the other side. The bottom cover twists off pretty easily, exposing some more screws underneath. After removing two screws and the LED light ring, I realized I couldn't go any further since this was all one piece of plastic and I put everything back together. But in doing so, I unfortunately broke the screen. That being said, the microscope is still fully functional if I connect the HDMI output to an external monitor. I think I actually might enjoy using it more this way since the picture looks better on the bigger screen than it does on the small monitor. Luckily, the menu options on the microscope still work, so I can still adjust the settings if I need to with the remote. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to take a look at this one sensor unless I do some more irreparable damage to the microscope. Similar to microscope number 5, this microscope has a high resolution, but only 50 times magnification. They definitely have some useful applications, but looking up close at chips isn't really one of them. There's a lot that can be said from this comparison and investigation into these digital microscopes, but I think the biggest takeaway is that none of them lived up to their maximum magnification specification. If you're thinking of getting into the chip inspection hobby and looking for a microscope, I would highly recommend that you avoid the cheaper USB digital microscopes. Instead, I would highly recommend purchasing a metallurgical microscope. There are many other metallurgical microscopes besides the Amscope one that I have in this video. That's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed this content and want to see more like it, consider subscribing. You can also check out all the other content I have on Instagram and TikTok. You can support my channel by watching all my other videos here on YouTube or by heading over to my store and buying some merch like PCB coins, stickers, or silicon wafers. And if you want to keep up with me in between videos, the best way to do that is the Discord server. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next chip.